All right, yo, what's up? It's A Revolution. We're here with Off the Top Podcast. Today we have our special guest, uh, Mike Crenshaw. Like, what's up, man? How you doing? I'm good. How are you? I'm good. I'm good. I'm honored to have you here. Thank you. You've been trying to get me down for a minute, so thanks I for have. being persistent. I'm glad it's working out. Yeah. Yeah, I figured you're busy. You know, yeah. you're a, you're a, an icon in Portland, you know, mm-hmm. especially in the hip hop scene and, and with activism. Um, and you've been doing hip hop in Portland, well, hip hop in general for mm-hmm. a while. Mm-hmm. Um, and what do you, how do you feel about the music scene compared to, you know, when you started and and, and how it is now with with this generation? You know, I, I I can I have to like be subjective and center myself, right? That's the only way to respond to the question authentically. So that said, I've grown as an artist. I've watched artists grow along with me. So there's my generation, and I I would consider my generation. Five Fingers of Funk, uh, Cool Nuts, Hungry Mom, Gism, um, Emergencies, you know, a handful of other folks. But then, and we started doing what we were doing seriously in the early and mid 90s out here. Uh, there have been successive generations. My career has grown to the point where I'm not out in the clubs as much as I used to be. Right. So I can't really honestly comment on a lot of things that are happening and bubbling right now. But there are artists who bridge that gap for me, artists like Swiggle Mandela, Rashid Jamal, Mike Capes. Um, those are artists that I consider younger artists, you know, and yet those artists are OGs to some of the artists that are coming now. Right. Yeah. But it's all quality, though. That that said, there is a ton of quality work out here. And because we don't have we were just talking about this because Portland has never had a commercial black music industry infrastructure. A lot of artists are forced to do things for themselves that uh people who get put on in cities like um la new york atlanta um there might be a staff an in-house staff at some of the labels and so forth to do the kinds of things that we have to learn how to do independently here right yeah yeah okay um is it did you did you start here in portland with hip-hop no man i started um i started rapping as a hobby to entertain my own imagination and my friends as a shorty in Chicago when uh, I grew up as a child in Illinois and then as a teenager in Minnesota, St. Paul, mostly Minneapolis. By the time I was in high school, I was freestyling just to kick it, like to talk shit about people's clothes and make the homies laugh. And that's how I used to sting on people. I battled on the back of the school bus. I've been exposed to rock music at a, a younger age and a lot of black uh, kids that I grew up with in, in the neighborhoods I lived in for for various reasons. Some, we moved around a lot. And so we would move from places that had black radio music or you know black music on the radio to places where you couldn't get black radio stations, pre-internet, right? So you had to have a city that had enough of a black population sometimes to be able to turn on the radio hear black music so i got exposed to rock music in some of those environments and then um because we moved around in illinois a lot before we left for minnesota and then my uncles were wild and so they they listened to led zeppelin and acdc and stuff like that so like i took those elements with into my freestyle rhymes too and i had like kind of a darker lyrical uh, direction sometimes and I used to win but battles in class in high school and on the back of the bus because I would say some stuff that was a little more far out or influenced by like heavy metal and stuff and um I didn't start doing hip-hop as a career choice till I moved to Portland in my 20s I think I was in a couple I tried to be in a couple punk bands in Minneapolis um did you play instruments or no i wanted to play guitar my uncle my uncle Corey, what's up Corey? Corey had a guitar he had an electric guitar i love the sound of guitar solos and distorted guitars and rock music and i wanted it so bad so he gave it to me and then my father don um i had to i had a biological dad and a stepdad and so my father don he his dad played it was a jazz guitarist and so i got Corey to give me his guitar, his electric guitar. And then I got my grandfather, Charles, to give me guitar lessons. Mm -hmm. But as a boy, like I wanted to pick up the guitar and be able to be like, (laughs) just just solo, you know? And when that didn't happen and I got like 
calluses on my thumb and stuff, I didn't stick with it. <laughs> so I'm not a musician in the sense, in the in an instrumentalist sense. Uh, I can mess with stuff and make make noise, but I'm just really a lyricist, right. a vocalist. All right. I mean, I like that, and the fact that you mm -hmm. know it was more so rock that kind of got you into where you are. Mm -hmm. What was it about Portland that made you want to hit the hip hop? So hip hop, like I said, I've been rhyming since I was a kid. To me, when I first heard Run DMC, you know, the way like Rockbox, um, some of the the earlier, there were a lot of early hip hop songs that sampled rock, right. you know? And so I wanted to do it all. So I, lo I like hip hop and I like rock. And so when I, by the time I was a teenager going and buying records, I was buying hip hop albums and punk albums and metal albums all at the same time. So to me, I didn't really separate the genres as much as the industry did. And later the audience would buy into that separation. Um, so I say that to say that <clears throat> when I started from for as long as I've identified with music as a source of inspiration, I've been in the hip hop, right. you know, and I started doing hip hop seriously when I moved to Portland because Excuse me, because um, <clears throat> I was unhappy with my life and I wanted to do something that came from inside of me. I started doing poetry slams in like 92 and uh, basically got invited to be the front person for a band. Yeah. And that was the beginning of Hungry Mob in 93. And I've been an independent hip hop artist ever since. So what, uh, what's, what's the main reason you stay independent? You know, have you gotten offers where you're just like, no, I just want to like stay in No, I never got an offer. I had a lot of people, bullshit people below smoke up my ass. Uh, <laughs> like, to the point where, like, they can't even get close to my ass no more. They just blow smoke. I'd be like, fuck, I can see it. I'd be like, that there is a smoke blowing motherfucker from, like, three blocks away. People who talk loud, talk fast, make a bunch of promises. But you notice that, that when you check... Like there'll be people who'll be like, give me this, give me this, I need this, and then you give them a bunch of content. And the next time you talk to them, you realize they haven't listened to any of the content. They haven't read any of the articles. Yeah. They haven't followed any of the links. They just keep going, I need this and this. Those type of people <clears throat> are a dime a dozen. I realize in the process through going to trade shows, listening to people sit on panels year after year who say the same shit. You know, you need to be like Soldier Boy. You be, if you want to be like Soldier Boy, a true independent artist who did, did it all by himself, you need to do this, this, and this, you know, and it's like, and each, you know, each panel, each every few years, there'll be a different artist they highlight, and they tell all the hungry artists in the audience, if you want to be, you know, you got to do this, this, and this, but they, these people who are industry insiders, um, be the A&R's record execs or whatever, they're not artists, most of them. There are people who are making a career off of the dreams of the artist. And that's what the music industry is. The, the, the desire of millions of people who are creative, who want to be famous, who are so desperate to be successful with their art, it feeds the machinery that's actually parasitic. That's based on um, a lot of lies and, and promises and false expectation and disappointment and exploitation. So that said, that's been my experience and that's why I'm independent. Plus, I talk about what I want to talk about, how I want to talk about it, and it's never been something that <clears throat> was inherently poppy. Yeah. I could there are elements of what I do that can intersect with pop, but I've never been able to scientifically create a pop single from inception to completion and release have the marketing and the promotional push, uh, the budget to fund it, the timing of aligning the, the release of the single with national press, um, and then being able to tour and have uh, adjacent radio campaigns that coincide with the national press push. Uh, wow. Uh, having big openers who can sell out headliners who can sell out a room be willing to put me on tour with them all that that machine has to be in place so i've been able to touch aspects of that at different times but never had the resources and the relationships to have it all in alignment at once yeah, yeah. okay uh speaking of <clears throat> budget 
mm. and, and campaign. Mm -hmm. um, I know you're talking about your docu series that you guys mm -hmm. are raising for the fundraiser. You want to talk about that? Yeah. So there's uh my brother uh Malcolm Shabazz Hoover, um Malcolm Hoover Shabazz. Malcolm's a homie. You know he he's from Philly. He's from Oakland. We've been knowing each other for a minute. We know a lot of the same people. Another black man that loves to ride motorcycles. He had this idea about riding motorcycles around the country and having conversations with interesting people. He approached me. You know, I've been riding Harley since 2011. Um, I've been in, you know, the black bike set in various formations for a minute. I love my bike. He said, man, let's let's go across the country, talk to people, get on our motorcycles. And kind of like a no reservations, Anthony Bourdain type thing, but just with two brothers on, on bikes. So we brought in a homie Tom, another former anti-racist skinhead. Been knowing Tom OG from back in the day. The three of us are riding to LA to the Born Free uh, Custom Motorcycle Show. We'll leave Portland June 22nd, and we'll be down there until June 26th. We'll shoot our first episode, and then we'll, you know, we'll edit it, and then we'll start shopping because we want to get funded to shoot a whole season. Uh, the show is called Crenshaw and Shabazz and the Homie Tom. AKA these motherfuckers and <laughs> we will be riding across the country talking to cool people like just like this. Okay. Um there's a GoFundMe and I'm gonna pull that up because if you go to GoFundMe and you go to Crenshaw Shabazz and you search for that, mm -hmm. then you're gonna find the link. We've got to raise forty two thousand dollars by June twenty second to get our crew on the road into LA and back. So yeah, just go to GoFundMe and, and search Crenshaw and Shabazz. C E R E N or excuse me C R E N S H A W and Shabazz S H A B A Z Z. Okay. Yep. Awesome. And we'll have that link up on there for you guys. Thank you. Um so before we move on, is there anything else that you wanted to highlight or talk about? Yeah, just the you know, the documentaries uh that Crenshaw Shabazz will be a documentary series. There's a documentary out currently that's been out since 2021. It, it won uh, Upper Midwest Emmy called The Baldies Documentary. And that's about the anti-racist skinhead crew of which I was a founding member. We also founded Anti-Racist Action um, in the 80s, which became a national um, response to fascists and neo-Nazi skinheads. And there's been a documentary called The Baldy Stock. We'll be screening that May 20th at the uh, Minnesota Historical Society in St. Paul, Minnesota. Um, but there was a podcast that came out of that called It Did Happen Here. So listen to It Did Happen Here podcast at it did happen here podcast.com because it ties the history of anti-fascist, anti-racist organizing coming out of the punk move movement and subculture. Um, to what happened here in Portland, Oregon in the 80s and 90s, because this city had a real bad neo-Nazi problem. Mm -hmm. And they actually beat an Ethiopian uh, man to death by the name of Mulageta Sarah. <clears throat> and so the podcast, it did happen here, it talks about that, um, that struggle, that movement. And then PM Press just released the book May 2nd. So the It Did Happen Here podcast has now become a book and that book is available. We'll be doing a book event at Powell's Books, June 6th at 7 p.m. Okay, June yeah. 6th at 7 p.m. Yeah, Important. I'd love to come check that out. Uh -huh. um, all right, awesome. Thank you so much for uh, for highlighting all this. Thank uh, you. For Off the Top, we always have our guest freestyle, right? Off the Top. Um, Mike Crenshaw is an OG with it, as you've heard. So you get to see it firsthand. And uh, yeah, let's, let's play a beat. Who's beat is this? Uh, a friend named Minnie Van Jim. Okay. Minnie Van Jim, shout out to you. Huh. Off the top, I'ma knock a motherfucker right off the socks. Barefoot, yo, coming with the rare look. With the flow, I'm sitting with a revolution, no confusion. We sitting back with the telephone, rocking music. Mini Van Jim, that's the beat. Yeah, that's them, that's he, that's him, that's me, Mike Crenshaw, the MC from the 503. The older R to E to the G. 
O-N, where the gorge runs into the ocean. I got the potion and it's fluid, the motion. You know I do it, I'm true to it. I'ma pass it over to my left. Uh, sit back, relax, and take a breath. Yes. Uh, I wasn't gonna hit a freestyle, but while we here, then I might as well keep it tight as hell when I'm spitting on these rhymes. I know I just kick back, spit it any time with the mic, and I got on my right motherfucking mic, Crenshaw. We be in the shit, man. We get all motherfuckers worried. All of these rappers be shooting like Steph Curry, lyrically. Metaphorically talking about this thing, making history with all of these dreams, yeah. Uh, they don't even know exactly what I mean, but I mean when I'm touching all the green like a green thumb. Yo. Pass it back if you want, yeah. Mm. Green thumb, it's all about collaboration, integrity, authenticity, and freedom. My disposition, I never needed a pistol or a blade. Sit and listen, I make a racist afraid. Not again, but every motherfucking day The things I say, they resonate I be influencing the youth I be coming through with the truth Yeah, you can put me in the booth Put me on wax, you can put me on a ADAT A A-track tape That's the medium they put music on back in the day Compact disc, whatever it is MP3s, waveforms, you see me Digital to physical, this individual is original I'm coming through Critical of anything that doesn't add up, mm, you know I give a fuck what. <laughs> I like it, I like it. Uh, yo, thank you guys so much for tuning in. Once again, I'm A Revolution, and I'm here with Mike Crenshaw. This is Off the Top Podcast. We appreciate you guys. Uh, you can look at all the links. Make sure to check out uh, these ser- docu series that Mike Crenshaw uh, is a part of. Damn. Yeah, <laughs> Minneapolis Baldies. Uh, you know, shout out to all the homies. Portland Baldies, the only two cities, you know, that, that have Baldies from where we originated from in Minneapolis and Portland. And uh yeah, the Mike Crenshaw.com at Mike Crenshaw M I C C R E N S H C R E N S H A W on the socials. And uh thank you. Yeah, no problem, man. Thank you yeah. so much. Peace. All right. Peace. Is that a slower one? Yeah, let's do that. Let's do the slower one for a sec. You know what? This studio is beautiful. You won't catch me on a microphone or in a video talking about my booty hoe, but that's what people be doing to each other. It really gets under my skin like glass shards in my cubicle. Imagine that sensation, all the temptation to be out here clout chasing. You know that's not what I'm about. I'm like the sun shining, turning grapes into raisins. In the time it just so happened to fit inside the bar, the four count in the measure in a way that brings you pleasure. I'll take it from the inside and turn it into the inside.